bones would dissolve them and pass easily. And he suggested I take one tablet a day forever for basic health. In two weeks, I passed 28 kidney stones. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. About the size of the head of a needle. I kept them all in a plastic baggie to remind me to take better care of myself. That was eight years ago. And I have never had the problem since. Everything cleared up, clear urine. It was a reminder that God put everything we need right here on the earth. Thank you so much, Todd. I want to send you some Oregamax or whatever. Email me your address if you don't mind, Todd. That is an awesome story. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Oregamax for kidney stones. We got that one taken care of. We'll be back after this. One minute, 10 second break. Stay tuned. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fenn. Every Thursday night at 7 on KCAA. NBC News Radio, AM 1050. KCAA invites you to listen to professional money manager Bill Gunderson every weekday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. Bill Gunderson is a highly respected money manager. He's a regular contributor to MarketWatch, TheStreet.com, and Town Hall Finance. Gunderson has appeared many times on the Fox News Channel, the Fox Business Network, and CNBC. You can hear Bill Gunderson's daily insight into the market at 7 a.m. weekdays right here on KCAA. The station that leaves no... This is 1050 AM, KCAA Loma Linda, and KCAA FM Yucaipa, 106.5 FM. Good morning, I'm Chuck Kamlick. CNBC Radio stocks are set to start the day higher on Wall Street. Business has been good since Thanksgiving. Chain store sales up 3.5% last week. $11 billion has been spent by shoppers on gifts since then. No slowdown in car demand. Chrysler sales rose 3% last month. Once again, it was because everyone wants to own a new Jeep, its top seller. True Car says revenue for all car makers rose to $44 billion in November. Another merger put to bed, mattress firm buying smaller rival Sleepies for $780 million. The deal combines the two top-selling mattress companies in the country. Cadbury owner Mondelez reportedly trying to sell some of its sweets overseas and slim down a bit. The brands up for grabs do not include Cadbury. And as climate talks wrap up in Paris, a new Yale poll shows 44% of business students would take less money to work for a company that takes action against climate change. I'm Chuck Kamlick, CNBC Radio. There are no guarantees in love, but there is a guarantee from EH Plus by eHarmony, our new personal matchmaking service. At EH Plus, your own personal matchmaker gets to know you so well, we can guarantee introductions that will be satisfying and exciting. EH Plus goes far beyond regular online dating sites, and that's a guarantee. Visit us at ehplus.com slash love or call 1-855-930-LOVE. I love running errands. Grocery store, giddy up. Take the kitty to the vet, absolutely. Because my catnip is called the Sirius XM free listening event. Two weeks of commercial free music plus sports, news, comedy, talk, and entertainment for free. Tune in now and get that feeling that starts with H and ends with happy. The Sirius XM free listening event now through December 2nd. Hit the sat button on your inactive satellite radio to listen now. Learn more at SiriusXM.com slash listen free. Sirius XM, road happy. Not available on select radios. Your application looks great, but I'm not seeing any marketing experience. The ad said mechanic needed. Right, but I need a mechanic slash marketing wizard. What do you know about reputation management? Nothing. Search engine optimization? Uh, is that under the hood? Hmm. Let Dex Media be your marketing department. We can help with any digital marketing solution from search to social. Contact Dex Media, that's D-E-X Media, to get found, get chosen, and get talked about. Call 844-230-3436 or visit DexMedia.com today. 
With your Tuesday news, I'm Jim Miller, CNBC News, KCAA, 1050 AM and 106.5 FM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Well, George Finkel, a retired San Bernardino police sergeant, who for years spread joy throughout the city at Christmas at the official department Santa Claus, has died. He was 76 years old, described by his former colleagues as a selfless man with a jovial personality who could play a mean harmonica. Finkel's large frame and white beard made him the ideal Santa, the city's annual ho-ho parade and the YMCA Children's Christmas Parade. The Aldi supermarket chain will hold hiring events today for new stores in San Bernardino and Riverside counties. Companies looking to fill nearly 150 store associate positions with wages that range from $13 to $21 an hour, depending on experience. One hiring event, 7 8 at 5 p at the Riverside Marriott Convention Center at 3637 5th Street. That is to fill positions in Fontana, Redlands, Highland, Beaumont, Lake Elsinore, La Quinta, Moreno Valley, Palm Desert, Palm Springs, and Yucca Pub. And federal authorities seeking to freeze the assets of a San Bernardino doctor, an office manager accused of illegally diverting half of $20 million they raised from Chinese investors hoping to qualify for an immigration program. 45-year-old Dr. Robert Yang of Redlands and the administrative manager of his medical practice, 45-year-old Claudia Kano of Pomona, secured funds from 40 investors hoping to immigrate to the U.S. And police continue their campaign against postal mail thieves. One group canvassing the Hunters Ridge area sidelined after residents spotted them helping themselves to the contents of community mailboxes late Friday night. Officers located evidence of numerous mail thefts and turned it over to the U.S. Postal Inspector's Office. It was the fourth series of mail thefts arrested by Montana police in recent weeks. And that's your news. I'm Jim Miller, CNBC News, KCAA, 1050 AM and 106.5 FM, the station that leaves no listener behind. It's time for your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. In Ranch Cucamonga, we have stop and go traffic on the 210 westbound between Millican Avenue, exit 60, and Campus Avenue. In Ranch Cucamonga, the 210 west is slow for Millican to Campus. In Corona, an accident has cleared on the 91 westbound after Lincoln. Uh, a conked out pickup truck has been cleared up from the right lane. The, right, the drive is slammed from La Sierra and stays busy ahead to Green River. In Riverside, an accident, the shoulder is blocked on the 15 northbound at Magnolia Avenue. This is an injury crash along the uh, right side. In Murrieta, stop and go traffic on the 15 southbound between the 215 and Rainbow Valley Boulevard. In Ontario, slow traffic on the 60 westbound between the 15 and Archibald Avenue. The 60 west is slow and go from the 15 to the 57. In Corona, a disabled vehicle in the, in the right lane is blocked on the 91 westbound appro approaching Lincoln Avenue. In Ontario, slow traffic on the 10 westbound between the 15 and Haven Avenue. Uh, the 10 west is slow from the 15 to town. This has been your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard for this morning. Frost advisory is in effect until 8 o'clock this morning. As we've got patchy frost, sunny skies and a high near 73. Tonight, mostly clear, low near 40. Sunny and a high near 75 on Wednesday. Mostly clear Wednesday night with a low near 44. Mostly sunny, high near 75 on Thursday. Thursday night, partly cloudy, low near 45. Mostly sunny, high near 66 on Friday. Friday night, partly cloudy, low near 44. Saturday, sunny, high near 71. Saturday night, partly cloudy, low near 42. Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 75. That's your weather forecast for this hour from the station that leaves no listener behind, NBC News Radio, AM 1050, KCAA. You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you When I go out Yeah, I know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you Good morning, good morning. I'm Marin Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are on the Brink the Morning Show on KCAA AM 1050 at FM 106.5. It is a cold morning this morning. I did not want to get out of bed this no, morning. No, neither of us did. It's like, ah... Oh. Yeah, I didn't notice. Well, okay, because you're in your home and we're in the <laughs> studio. Because just because you live in Corona and getting back to your home would be a nightmare after the show. Absolutely. <laughs> getting anywhere in Corona is a nightmare these days. I know. I know. It's just been bad for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's every time you read the traffic, you come to Corona and I go, just just say there is there is no traffic in Corona because traffic actually implies they move. It's, just, <laughs> it's a parking lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a parking lot. Yeah, when's rush hour? The answer is yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Always. Yeah, Always. and I know they're working to make it better, but while they're working to make it better, it's awful. <laughs> yep, it and is. And in Corona, we have a seven-hour delay. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and if you're trying to travel to Corona, you will arrive tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, you think about it from from San Bernardino, it is about 42 miles to Santa Ana, but it, you know, on, during the morning commute, it can take two hours. Yeah, know, that's why more. in California we don't tell people how far it is somewhere; we tell tell them how long it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he says, you know, how far is it to, to Disneyland? Well, that's about a three hour drive from here. <laughs> Yeah, it's 22 miles, three-hour drive. <laughs> Welcome to gridlock. Uh-huh. So on that happy note, we have a great show planned today. So excited. We're going to be talking in the second half of the show with Ryan Britt. He is the author of Luke Skywalker Can't Read and Other Geeky Truths um, with his techie crew. I thought that that would be a fun interview. Yes. And, yeah, look forward to it. And, uh, so, and, of course, there's plenty of news stories to talk about. But before we get started, I want to let everybody know, as I always do, all the ways you can listen to KCAA, this show and all the shows on the station. You can find us at 1050 on the AM dial at 106. 6.5 on the FM dial. You can find us at KCAARadio.com where you'll find links to all of our social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. You'll also find our embedded Ustream feed. Got a camera in the studio, uh, a button to click to listen online if you'd rather listen instead of uh, watch. Uh, if you have an Android device, you can go to KCAAExpress.com. If you have an Apple device, you can use the TuneIn app. And if you have none of the, bu- the above, you can call 832-999-1050. That's 832-999-1050. Lots of great stories um, uh, today. I think the most frivolous will get out of the way first. Yes, let's do it. Reese's peanut butter trees. Have you seen them? You mean the eggs? They look like blobs. Yeah. The Reese's peanut butter blobs. <laughs> it looks like, like an egg kind of, kind of. No, it's... Like one of those Easter eggs. No, it's just... Mm. Yeah, it was doing a disservice to eggs, I think, calling that yeah. an egg. Yeah. <laughs> so is it a tree? Is it a turd? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it worth getting upset about? Some say yes to the uh, to the last, and are taking a social taking to social media to complain about the blob like shape of the Hershey Company's latest attempt to make holiday themed Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah, it's really not working. This is according to CNN. This year, allegedly in the shape of a Christmas tree, their attempt at pumpkins yielded similar results and were met with a similar backlash. I have questions. Writes one Twitter user, while another just poses. Uh, poses just one what part of this looks like a christmas tree (laughs) yeah you know and it's funny because i've seen some really nice like artistic molded chocolates and stuff they just don't seem to get it there at the reese's you know (laughs) factory no you know and and if it doesn't really look like a tree they should draw on it yeah or just just face it you know just call it a holiday cup and and don't even worry about what shape it is yeah put put red or green tinfoil on the bottom or something yeah Yeah, exactly they could take the exact same cups and wrap it in 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 a in a santa claus foil exactly exactly because right now it just it it, (laughs) it's although we're talking about their products so maybe that's the the secret sauce huh? yeah yeah well so and others argue that the, the taste is all that matters if you are complaining about the shape of your reese's peanut butter christmas tree then you're not eating it fast enough tweets one satisfied customer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and others say that the ta- it, that the tree tastes better than regular Reese's cups. Either way, the complaints about the Christmas tree shape or lack thereof have been around since 2013. So, yeah, the ratio of chocolate to peanut butter changes in the holiday shapes, and so, you know, the flavor profile changes slightly. People like it apparently. They've actually created a way to to give them feedback though at Reese's, so you can go online and and uh, you know tell them just how mad you are about the shape. <laughs> Because that's a thing. And if that's the worst thing that's happened to you, <laughs> hey. <laughs> we should buy a bunch of them and just check them out. So I nice. think so. I think this in, this re, this requires more investigation on our part. We really need to, to get some evidence here. Is that sort of like the boss's like, sarcastic complaint box? Yeah, yes. probably. The one that he never, <laughs> never opens? The, yes. No, no, no. The one that opens directly into the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a hole in the bottom. Yeah, there's no the bottom in it. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Okay, had to have a laugh this morning. <laughs> ah, well, one there's a really good change happening, and it's interesting that we 
preceded this article with uh, or this conversation with the Reese's peanut butter cup story. The CDC um, says that the new diabetes stats show a pretty clear change. Uh, Some big news in America's public health arena. The number of new cases of diabetes is clearly falling for the first time in 25 years. This is according to the New York Times. Stats released on Tuesday by the CDC show a nearly 20% drop from 08 to 14 in, in what the newspaper calls the first sustained decline since diabetes began booming in the 1990s. Specifically, the U.S. saw 1.4 million new cases uh, in 2014, down from 1.7 million in 2008. There's plenty of major trouble spots. The decline is pronounced among white people and less so for African-American and Hispanics. And a notable gap remains in regard to education levels. It's not yet time for a parade, says the head of the diabetes program at Massachusetts General Hospital. But he adds, it has finally entered in the consciousness of our population that sedentary lifestyle is a real problem, that increased body weight is a real problem. A CDC researcher researcher calls the results a little surprising given the decades-long increases, but it seems pretty clear now that the incident rates have actually started to drop. That is awesome. That is awesome. And they're all out there running in the marathons. They are, and that's, that's why they're, happening. they're so crowded. They're crowded, and the prices are going up. It's all because these people who don't want diabetes, Aaron. <laughs> Would you put yourself in that camp? <laughs> They're making your hobby a little more expensive. Huh? <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I, I'm I'm not in that camp. But uh, man, there's a lot of people out there running these days, though. That's, which is a good. That's thing. good thing, though. Yeah, that's good thing. Um, it, yeah, you know, I I we we've made such. There's been you know there have been movies about this, documentaries, obviously. Uh, there have been you know the the Let's Move campaign from the first lady. There's so much noise being made about. Uh, about lifestyle and diabetes that I well, think people, it's sinking in. Even the big Black Friday push to get people to, to not go shop and instead go out to national parks and go hiking and things like that. I mean, there's, there seems to be a real move to get people outdoors again. And, and it's, it's organic. I don't know that it's all just happening sort of, you know, I think people are, I think the recession changed people's perception of what their values are, you know? Well, that's an interesting, that's interesting. I think maybe that it, that it did. You know, people had less money. And so they started doing other things. Yep. What do you think, Todd? Yeah, no, I I think that's a very um, uh, real possibility. I don't know if there's any statistics that we can point to at this point to back that kind of thing up. But I think it's an interesting proposition. Things like, um, you know, there's great programs out there like the 100 Mile Club that, uh, you know, are getting kids involved in being outdoors and being active as well and doing things other than sitting at home and playing video games, you know. I mean, that's big. When 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 we were young, I, I I spent most of my time outside. I mean, that's you know, that's where I played. I didn't play in the house, and so um, you know, so I, I got my vitamin D and I moved around, and and I know that that's something that they've said has uh, changed a lot for kids, and so it's good to see people getting up and getting out. Yep. So it is time for a break. We'll continue this conversation when we get back. It is 6.15. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. We'll be right back. You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. Looking for the latest news in the new Loma Linda University Medical Center? It's in the Loma Linda City News, along with more local news in the calendar section with what to do and where to go for fun. The Loma Linda City News, in print and online at lomalindacitynews.com. Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company has been serving the greater Inland Empire for over 60 years. For all of your printing needs, from full-color printing to high-speed copying and everything in between, go to Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. Their staff is committed to your total satisfaction. Great service isn't just lip service at Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. It's the way they do business year after year. Having trouble finding drafting supplies? Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company still carries a complete selection. Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company is rated high in customer satisfaction by Value Star, an independent rating company. For all of your personal or business printing, call Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company at 909-792-3478. That's 792-3478. Or visit them on New York Street in Redlands off the I-10 and the Crosstown Freeway. Hi, this is Steve Allenart from Rancho Financial with the Mortgage Minute. With property values increasing, this might be the perfect time to do a loan checkup to see if it makes sense to refinance. 
Do you have an equity line? If your equity line is getting close to 10 years old, your payment is about to fully amortize. Coupled with the certainty that the feds will soon increase short-term rates, there might be a substantial jump in payment on your line of credit. If we combine your current loan, equity line, and possibly even some of your credit debt, there could be a substantial reduction in what you have to pay each month. Do you have VA eligibility? VA will allow 100% cash out financing. This may be a perfect time to use your eligibility. We can go 85% cash out with FHA or 80% with a standard conventional loan. There are many possible options that could make a huge difference in your monthly payments. That's why you need a loan financial planner to provide you with all of your possible options. Give me a call, Steve Allador at 888-563-1070. That's 888-563-1070 or go to loanfinancialplanner.com. What have I learned so far? I've learned that dropping out of high school was my decision. But as a single mom, that decision affected more than just me. To set an example, I had to be the example. I found a free high school diploma program at Learn for Life that fits around my busy life. I have a team of teachers, tutors, and counselors that really care. I learn at my pace in an environment that is safe and comfortable. What have I learned so far? I've learned that I can change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meeting times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one -on -one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or in Enroll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's 877-360-LEARN. Are you looking for the right place to purchase your landscaping items? Well, come see us at Hydroscape. Hydroscape offers a large selection of irrigation products, including Irritrol and Toro, such as their efficient precision nozzles. For 40 years, Hydroscape has been family owned and operated, serving Southern California. With 17 locations, our knowledgeable and experienced staff is equipped to help you with all your irrigation, landscape, and outdoor living projects. Whether you're installing irrigation systems, wanting to maintain a healthy landscape, or simply create a beautiful lit space for outdoor entertaining, Hydroscape is the place to go. Visit our website at hydroscape.com for more information and find helpful articles on our blog. Or call our customer service center at one 800 395 Four four seven seven. Listen to KCAA Loma Linda for less confrontation and more information. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Welcome back. This is Aaron Brinker. And Tobin Brinker. And Todd Brinker. And it is time. Well, first, we're on the Brink the Morning Show for on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. And it's time for Todd's Tech Time. Good morning. Good morning. So, hey, guys, do you remember back prior to, um, I don't know, about 10 years ago working on computer keyboards? Do you remember differences in the way your keyboard looked? Oh, yeah. I remember the split one that I always thought was kind of funny. Yeah, Microsoft still sells the ergonomic split keyboard, which a lot of people use in their offices. If you're on the keyboard a lot during the day, people tend to get that. I remember the difference in how they felt. So some of the keys were closer together or farther apart. Some of them, you had to hit the key harder or softer, and it made for a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Well, one of the things that, that original uh, computer keyboards did was that they tried to emulate what was considered the, the gold standard in keyboards at the time, and that was the IBM Selectric typewriter. And that's what had been the, the gold standard in keyboards. And so whether it was on a laptop or on a desktop computer, that was what people tried to emulate. There seems to be a, uh, a comeback these days, especially for people who are gamers online. But um, a, a lot of people who are finding that they spend a good amount of time typing are making their way back to the mechanical keyboards. Really? Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah. They're available um, in a variety of different brands, and uh, from from anywhere from about forty dollars up to one hundred and fifty dollars for ones that actually have like replaceable switches on their um, on the keyboard. You can actually pull it off and replace the switch if the switch isn't working right. So they're a little bit more uh, heavy duty and more industrial. Um, but yeah, they're actually making a big big comeback these days. Uh, people are saying that uh, that the it's a more natural typing method, that the the throw of the keys is a more natural distance. Um, 
And, you know, it's just a, a general sense that the keyboards keep getting flatter and flatter and the keys getting thinner and thinner. And, yeah, we can even flip over our iPads and, and, and tablets and type directly on the glass. And it's just bad. It's yeah. just bad. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because the tablet keyboards are, are generally a big pain in the neck because – on our phones, we type with our thumbs, and on a on the on a full size keyboard, we type with our hands. But on those tablets, the keys are all so close together that it's awkward. That it doesn't feel right when you're when you're typing with your fingers. You, I, yeah. I, I find myself, you know, kind of hunting and pecking instead of typing. Yeah, because it's on a mini version of a keyboard. Um, you know, one of the things that you can do with like iOS devices, and you can also load this into your Android devices. You can do a split keyboard that you then type with your thumb, so that half the keyboard sits under your right thumb and half sits under your left thumb under each side. You can do the thumbing like you would on a phone on your tablet, and that's built into iOS, and it's something you can load into as a, an alternate keyboard onto Android. And so um, some people find that that works better for tablet typing for them. Well, I've got um, fat thumbs, and that I'm I'm not good at the text typing anyway. I mean, I think all this stuff needs to be adjusted somehow because. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, with... Android just came out, or I mean, sorry, um, not Android. Um, BlackBerry just came out with an Android-based phone, their first one that runs the Android operating system. It's a touch device, but it has a slide-out keyboard at the bottom for those people who are used to using the BlackBerry and want oh. that that input. Um, but. Uh, a few less than scientific studies have done some some testing between that and just touch typing or using the swipe type of keyboards and found that that it's significantly slower than a swipe keyboard and uh, and so there's some some speed issues there but um, you know there there's some something to be said for just a real solid well-made keyboard uh, if you spend a lot of time typing yeah I agree I agree. Now, yeah. now, um, a fr I have a good friend who still, where you know, uses a BlackBerry. She's the only person I know who still uses a BlackBerry because it has the raised. It has an actual keyboard instead of it mm -hmm. being a simulated keyboard on a screen. Um, are there any phones that are moving towards that? You know, going back to those actual keyboards. Well, like I said, Android. I mean, uh, gosh, I said Android twice now. It's uh, BlackBerry is running an an Android device, and uh, the Android. Um, uh, the the new BlackBerry will a have a touch interface that looks just like the current phones. It's actually fairly thin, but then from the bottom you can slide out a keyboard and actually have a real keyboard for those who really oh, want awesome. that keyboard. I, I, I missed that. Sorry, I must have, you know, yeah, fallen you know, asleep. And, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I, I remember that. For me, Aaron that was, was one typing. Of the I, was, I was top. I was typing. I was blogging online as we speak. There we go. I um. You know, I was one of the uh, real hesitant to switch to a, a glass only uh, device. I had the um, I didn't have a BlackBerry. I had a um, uh, a Palm Trio that I absolutely loved, and you know, giving up my keyboard was a big deal. But then I also remember switching from a Palm device that had um, character recognition and a stylus to one that had a keyboard. For me, was a big deal. Yeah. Um, you know, and I found that that actually turned out to be a better idea. So, so I just tried to remember that when I switched. So, so anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the keyboards and thought that you know, if anybody wants to get those things, they're out there, and you know, they're still available. You can get good quality ones. A couple other things I want to talk about is a few more um, Christmas gift ideas in the tech world. Um, if you've seen the commercials for the new Star Wars, have you seen this, any of the trailers? You yes. guys watching? Yes. That oh, they're pretty that? cool. The new little droid that you see rolling around the ball with the little head on top of it's called BB-8. And you can get a, B a BB-8 RC droid that actually rolls around. It's a ball, and his head stays on top. Uh -huh. And you can remote control him for about 80 bucks. Oh, that's uh, so cool. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, and it looks like a lot of fun. Um, uh, so, you know, maybe it's not the uh, the uh, drone that's going to fly around your backyard, but, uh, but you can have a little BB-8 zipping around your house. Um, Another thing that's out, Amazon uh, has for a long time had a voice remote that's available for their Amazon TV. Now they have the Amazon TV stick. So it basically looks just like a USB card, except that it's got an HDMI plug on the back. So you plug it right into the back of your computer. There is no little box or no cables, anything to set down. And then you've got a voice remote. And so um, uh, I've actually got one of those on order. I'm going to take a look at it, and we'll do a review of that probably next week. Um, awesome see how it works, uh, and see how well the voice interaction works with finding shows. So I'll give you a heads up on that when it uh, comes in. Right um, on. And, 
And then the last little update, last little thing I wanted to offer to people is if you've got a computer that's three to five years old, you're starting to think it's getting a little bit slow. Um, a lot of the uh, three to five year old computers have uh, mechanical hard drives in them still, spinning hard drive. And for less than $100 now, you can get a very large solid state hard drive that you can put into your laptop. And if you try that, you're going to find that it will make your laptop like brand new. Um, you can significantly speed up an older computer and make it uh, um, last several years longer. Right and on. If, you know, so if you've got a newer one that's got already got the solid state drive in it, then chances are you can't upgrade that very easily. A lot of times they're gluing those in these days. But um, if it's right around that three to five year old range, there's still a whole bunch of old ones out there that had the spinning hard drives. And uh, you know, if you want to treat yourself to a new computer without having to start over, um, there's a lot of online tutorials on how to put the drive in and load um, either you know your Mac OS or Windows onto that, or if you choose to use Linux or, or another operating system that's out there. Um, night and day, night Very and day, cool. absolutely makes your computer feel like a new machine. So, is this true for any computer, a Mac, a Unix machine, a or a PC? Any any of the devices that have um, physical spinning hard drives, you can upgrade them to an SSD drive. Um, and it, it will make a hundred percent difference in the way the machine reacts. They, the, the, the difference in the speed of the device is just not even comparable. And so, yeah, it's um, a quick and easy upgrade to turn an old computer into something that it, it feels brand new again. So I've got a question about that. Mm -hmm. I have a seven year old iMac, but it's a pretty fast iMac. Um, I know that the iMac is a little bit hard to take apart. Like you have to lift out the screen to replace the hard drive. Yeah, a couple suction how, cups to pull off the glass. Do you know how difficult that? Like, is that something I'd be able to do at home? If you go to iFixit.com, they've got step-by-step -step instructions on how to pull it out and put in a new one. They also sell the hard drives there. Cool. Um, you can also compare their prices uh, to uh, some other people, but I like to get it from them. They're usually competitive in prices, and they give you step-by-step -step instructions. It's actually fairly easy. Because I've been thinking about that. Because I was just like, you know what? This processor is still pretty good. Yeah, don't really need and any other upgrades. And absolutely, you, you, yeah, and you will find it that it is like having a brand new computer. It's just it's it's absolutely night and day. It revives the old computer. It makes it something that you're, uh, you know, enjoy working with again. Oh, that's yeah. awesome, and it, and it it prevents people from having or you know they don't have to spend the big money to buy a new machine for a exactly few years. yeah. And like I said, I mean you can get good size SSDs that these um, solid state drives. For, for um, under $100 now. And, and you can do that all at iFixit.com? iFixit.com is a for great place Mac. to go. Mm -hmm. For your Mac or for your both your PC and your Mac? Um, iFixit, I, I mentioned iFixit. They, they, they actually provide several things. They started out more Mac-oriented, so they've got more tutorials there on how to do things with Macs and, and or Apple devices. But they do have other um, tutorials there as well. Right on. Todd, you just are a, our Toddopedia. <laughs> yes. Glad All right. to help out. I see we're um, we're at the half we're, hour. We are at the half hour. Uh, so it's I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are on the Brink the Morning Show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. We'll be right back. For more local radio every day, listen to KCAA. California headline news, sad details emerging in a Redwood City murder case. 22-year-old Anthony Korincic arrested Monday, two days after allegedly stabbing his 34-year-old girlfriend, Colleen Straw, to death in San Mateo. Our detectives worked literally 24-7, round the clock, over the last three days, doing surveillance at various locations. After Dave Norris, his Gorincic surrendered after police threw a flashbang grenade into the home where he was hiding. Gorincic released just last week after serving two months for assaulting Straw. She'd taken out a second restraining order against him before she was killed. An L.A. County Sheriff's deputy talks about rescuing an abandoned baby girl buried alive in a hole in Compton. As we get down there, we're getting closer to the sound, pulling the asphalt chunks off to the side. That's not going to be a baby. And then as soon as I saw that blanket, I was like, oh, wow, it's a baby. Deputy Adam Collette responding to a call from two women who reported hearing a baby's cries near a bike path. A child less than two days old recovering in the hospital. A mother still at large. Geico weather continued below normal temperatures. Jeff Scott, California. Any Joe Schmo knows Geico will work to save you money on car insurance. But since money talks, why not just ask the savings? 
That's me, Joe Savings. I'm not literally a million bucks, but I feel like it. Why? Because when Joe switched his car insurance at Geico.com, his monthly rate went down and the savings went up. Now he uses the handy Geico mobile app anytime to check out his policy perks. Talk about a win-win and two thumbs up. Man, I wish I had thumbs. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. <sighs> What's that sound you're hearing, California? That's the sound of someone who's resting easy. Dreaming of kittens befriending piglets. Because they've just saved on their car insurance by switching to Geico. Yup, California. That's the sound of savings. Oh, savings. For a free rate quote, visit Geico.com and see how much you could save. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard for this morning. Frost advisory is in effect until 8 o'clock this morning. As we've got patchy frost, sunny skies and a high near 73. Tonight, mostly clear, low near 40. Sunny and a high near 75 on Wednesday. Mostly clear Wednesday night with a low near 44. Mostly sunny, high near 75 on Thursday. Thursday night, partly cloudy, low near 45. Mostly sunny, high near 66 on Friday. Friday night, partly cloudy, low near 44. Saturday, sunny, high near 71. Saturday night, partly cloudy, low near 42. Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 75. That's your weather forecast for this hour from the station that leaves no listener behind. NBC News Radio, AM 1050, KCAA. Hi, Leif Erikson for Snow Country. A fast start to the season for many of our mountains is helping putting last year into the rearview mirror rather quickly. We always love talking about skiing before Thanksgiving, and we have it, plus a good chance of maybe seeing some more snow in some of the higher elevations before the holiday always gets you going. Mountain High with five early season runs right now, going from 8.30 until 4, while Snow Summit offers up over half a dozen runs, and they've seen about five or six inches of natural snow just in the past week. Bear Mountain offering up nearly half a dozen runs as they go daily from 9 until 4. Mammoth, a great selection for early in the season with 75 runs, so all abilities finding something to do there. Arizona off to a fast start with Sunrise Park at 24 pack powder trails. Arizona Snowball seeing a nice 10-inch dumping of snow last week, 29 runs. More at snowcountry.com. Leif Erickson for KCAA, 1050 AM and the all-new 106.5 FM, the stations that leave no listener behind. It's time for your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Erin Brinker. In Riverside, we have stop-and-go traffic on the 15 northbound between Temescal Canyon Road and Highway 91. In Temecula, an accident, the shoulder is blocked on the 15 southbound at the 79 Winchester Road. The Temecula, Temecula 15 south at Winchester Road crashed on the right shoulder. Traffic is slow from the 215 to Rainbow Valley Boulevard. In Paris, stop-and-go traffic on the 215 northbound between Nuevo Road and Harley Knox Boulevard. In Riverside, an accident, the left lane is blocked on the 215 southbound at Columbia Avenue. Stop and go traffic from Lockadena Drive to I- Lock- Lock- from Lockadena Drive Iowa Avenue. In Chino, slow, slow traffic on the 60 westbound between Mountain Avenue and the 57 Orange Freeway. The 10 west is slow and go from Central to the 57. The 210 west is heavy in pockets from Carnelian to Foothill, Foothill Boulevard. In Corona, there's a disabled vehicle. The right lane is blocked on the 91 westbound approaching Lincoln Avenue. And finally, in Riverside, an accident is cleared on the 15 northbound at Magnolia Avenue. This is an injury crash along the right shoulder. This has been your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. And now it's time for another Stumbled. Support San Bernardino Spotlight. Hi, my name is George Hahn. I am the senior minister at the Center for Spiritual Living Inland Empire. In the next few weeks, we would like to support San Bernardino by highlighting the outstanding things about our city. Today's program features Dennis Baxter from Habitat for Humanity. Thank you, George. I'm very proud that Habitat for Humanity San Bernardino area has been serving the residents of the area since 1992. So that's 24 years of building homes and building homes. Each partner family participates in our own uh, curriculum in the greater San Bernardino area that provides guidance and resources to a successful long-term experience as being a homeowner. We have financial literacy classes that they go through so they understand the difference between being a homeowner and being a renter. 
Brush with Kindness program helps out uh, low-income folks with, you know, simple chores around the house. And, of course, our ReStore, uh, located in Redlands, is a real part of our fundraising effort. So it's building homes. It's building hope. Folks can give us a call at 909-478-1176 or habitatsb.org. This program was underwritten by Center for Spiritual Living Inland Empire. If you would like information about today's program, please contact me, Reverend George, by calling 909-883-7171. That's 909-883-7171. Broadcasting more local radio programs than any other station in California, we are KCAA. Welcome back. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. So excited to introduce our next uh, guest, our Ryan Britt. He is an author. He's appeared in the New York Times, Vice, The All, The Morning News, Nerve, Omni, Clark's World, The Mind Hut, Barnes & Noble Book Blog, Electric Literature, Cross Genres, The Drum, The Literary Hub, and Elsewhere. He's formerly the staff writer at the Hugo Award-winning Mega, I'm sorry, web magazine Tor.com, where he remains a contributor. He's told stories on stage with The Moth, The Liar Show, Risk, and, the, and is co-curator of two live reading series, Less for Genre and the Hi-Fi Reading Series. He currently teaches writing for Media Bistro, the Sackett Street Writers Workshop, and catapult as well as privately he has written his first book it's a collection of essays called luke skywalker can't read and other geeky truths ryan Britt, welcome to the show thank you you got the long bio i'm sorry about that no i'm not it's all right yeah no i'm, I'm on your i'm on your website i wanted to say it to 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 list everything that you've done because it's actually quite incredible oh well, yeah thank you <laughs> So, so it sounds that way. <laughs> so I'm a public school teacher, and I have to know why is Luke Skywalker illiterate? <laughs> well, he doesn't have anything to read. It's part of the reason. Ah. Um, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have any books. I um, mean, he doesn't have a, a real need for them in his culture. Um, you know, I think that probably later in life, when you know he gets, you know, his. Uh, his training on, he might get a little bit of reading. But, you know, in that, that basic state when we meet him, you know, there's no real reason to believe that he's got any books. Uh, no one really needs to have, have any kind of prolonged reading skills, you know. Well, he was living on a farm and, you know, in his frustrated teenage angsty way. Uh, no, I can't see him sitting around with books at that time either. <laughs> oh, come on now. How did well, yeah. he learn to fix the yeah. droids and run the little uh, oil <laughs> bath that he sticks to CP3, C-3PO in? Well, yeah, I mean, nobody really, um, everybody kind of just, you know, the kind of reading in Star Wars that I, that I think that they do is kind of similar when you go to a foreign country and you have just enough to get by um, of that language. That's kind of the reading that people seem to do in Star Wars. They read enough to get by. So this is really a story of uh, our collection of, of stories about our generation. I mean, um, I'm thinking that we're all within this, you know, 10 years of one another. And um uh, you know, so what what prompted you to write this book? Well, you know, I've been writing a lot of uh, commentary um, about science fiction and fantasy online for a number of years, and so I've been kind of a kind of a professional nerd, um, and so I kind of wanted to have something a little bit more permanent um, and have something that was a little bit more patient. Um, that which is hilarious because it's a very short book, um, but uh, I wanted something that people could say. Oh, well, it's not just a funny blog post I read online, but it's something that maybe has a little bit more, a um, little bit more heart to it than just a geeky observation. So that was that was the goal. So geek has come of age, uh, you know, in, during our lifetime. Yeah, I think so. I think that a lot of that has to do with just time passing, though. You know, because um, I grew up. You know, I, I talk about it in the book. You know, uh, ET was new. You know, um, and so a lot of us grew up with those, those kinds of films, you know, Back to the Future, Indiana Jones being um, the norm, uh, being that's just a regular movie. And I think the generation just previous, it kind of blew their minds. You know, my mom was telling me on the phone the other day when she saw Star Wars for the first time. 
um, in 77, she was 26, and she was just like, this blew our minds. Whereas, you know, a lot of us grew up, and it was like, well, that was normal. So I think that's how Geek, <laughs> geek kind of took over. <laughs> okay, well, I was seven, and I thought it was pretty cool at seven, but, but yeah, it became the, it became the norm. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Well, in movies like Superman and the, the way that special effects changed what they could do in movies, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's changed the way they can tell stories. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's funny because a lot of those movies still look pretty good. You know, the original Superman is one of my favorite movies, you know, and that movie is so interesting. Um, I hope you know, this is material for another book. Um, but, you know, that movie is so interesting because it was written by Mario Puzo, you know, who wrote The Godfather. I did not know, you know that. I, mean? I didn't That's, either. Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> Like, the first Superman movie, it was like Mario Puzo wrote the screenplay. The Godfather, and, you know, of course, that explains why Marlon Brando's in it a little bit, I think. Um, but, yeah, and so this wonderfully huge movie was written by this brilliant novelist. So you show us how monster movies are just romantic comedies with commitment issues. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. Um, I think that um, there's this amazing tendency in monster movies for there to be, like, a couple and that their their couplehood gets disrupted <laughs> by a monster, and uh, in um, Godzilla, the, the the Japanese Godzilla, the original one, the couple that is they're going to get engaged, and then they call off their engagement because Godzilla is attacking. <laughs> you know, that's a real plot point in that movie, and I was like, that's such a crazy metaphor for our real lives. Like, I don't know if I can go through with this, honey. Because of Godzilla, it's like well, there's always going to be a Godzilla in your life, you know. There's, you know, so if you if you extend that metaphor out, it's just like, come now on, the whole thing you know, you, you guys could have probably gone through but it's what a better time to get engaged, <laughs> you know. So, Tobin, you were saying? Oh, I was going to say now the whole uh, TV show Bridezilla takes on a whole new meaning. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think it was. The, I think that's probably what, where they were headed with the original Godzilla. <laughs> that was their intent. I'm sure. So. Um, uh, Luke Skywalker can't read tears down the wall between hardcore sci-fi readers and the mainstream uh, making it perfect for both cosplayers those who haven't worn a costume and, and those who haven't worn a costume since grade school and Tobin and I uh, a couple of weeks ago went to our first um, Comic Con and that was a trip to see the people in uh, you know all dressed up and it was pretty cool um, uh, yeah it's fun it, it is fun so are you a cosplayer I'm not, you know, I think that I think I'm an accidental cosplayer. Um, people always when I when I first started doing Comic Con um as a grown up, you know, I was doing it as a journalist, um, for a science fiction blog. And so I think that people would be like, Are you dressed as someone from Doctor Who? And I was just like No, but kind of. <laughs> I think that I I think that I accidentally um look like I'm I'm one of the one of the one of the doctors from Doctor Who um frequently uh, based on my own fashion choices. Um I love cosplayers. Some of my dearest friends are 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 cosplayers. I I personally um I think I I'm my personality is so is so frustratingly annoying that I think it would destroy any character that I was dressed as. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't, and it's, it's expensive too. It's pricey so, <laughs> to get all those costumes. So your is, your book is on sale now. That's right. It came out last week. It came out last week, and you are coming to California on your book tour. I am. I'm going to be. Um, I'm going to be at Book Soup, um, Los Angeles. Uh, let me look. I can actually tell you the exact day. I, I'm looking at your um, website. It's on the twelfth, uh, January twelfth. Yes. The twelfth of January. I'm going to be at Book Soup. Ah, right on. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, yeah, it's gonna be great. What as a, as a lover of 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 sci-fi, what about all of these reboots? What do you think about those? Because they just seem endless. Well, it depends. You know, I mean, like I think that sometimes it, it can be really, really great. Um, you know, and it, you know, with the superhero movies, they're always going to get remade, and they always have. And I think with the superhero thing, is it's a lot like I like thinking of it as restagings. You know, and a joke that I make in my book is, you know, nobody gets super mad about like another Hamlet production. Nobody gets mad about that. Yeah. Um, and that's because Hamlet is so ingrained in our consciousness. With superheroes, I think that that's similar. You know, it's just like we're going to have, you know, like how mad are we going to be in 2025 when they remake Spider-Man again? <laughs> you know, um, it's going to, but it'll be for a whole new generation, the same way that like I can accept you know, I saw Jude Law as Hamlet years ago on Broadway, but I can oh, also accept David Tennant as Hamlet, you know, um, you know, or, um, 
you know, Kenneth Branagh, I can accept as Hamlet. In the same way I can accept Michael Keaton as Batman or, um, you know, Christian Bale as Batman and now, and now um, uh, uh, Ben Affleck, you know. So I think that, that with superheroes, I think it's interesting. And then, and then you get to pick your favorite, right? I mean, that's like a thing. You get to say, well, who was the best Batman? Who was yeah, the best? Accepting Ben Affleck is, it remains to well, be it, seen. Yeah, you know, and I love Sherlock Holmes, and people have been doing that with Sherlock Holmes for years, you know, and, like, we live in a, we live in an age where not only do we have, you know, two Sherlocks on TV with Benedict Cumberbatch and uh, Johnny Lee Miller, but we have two Watsons with Lucy Liu and Martin Freeman. And how neat is that? You know, um, I think that that's wonderful. And that's, a, again, you know, something that is, you know, that talk about reboot. Sherlock Holmes, you know, over and over and over. Uh, you know, yeah. but Benedict Cumberbatch is like the best Sherlock Holmes, in my opinion, ever. Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I, my favorite was always Jeremy Brett, but um, Benedict Cumberbatch definitely, um, definitely, I, I, I adore him. I have, a, you know, and there's another cosplay thing. I have a coat because um, it's cold in New York now. I have a coat that I call my Benedict Cumberbatch coat. Oh, right on. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, House was kind of a a, a reboot of um, Sherlock Holmes because he's he's yes, really Sherlock. Sure. Yes, very, very much. Yeah, no, I, I like I like House very much, and um, yeah, uh, Hugh Laurie's hilarious. He is hilarious. You know, the first time I was so used to him, uh, I, I became I quote unquote met him, or became acquainted with him as playing House, and then when I mm-hmm. when I realized that he was English and went back and and started watching the old um, uh, Black oh, Adders yeah. and some of these other shows, mm-hmm. it it kind of tripped me out a little bit because his English his American accent is so good, but the man is actually English. <laughs> I saw him at New York Comic Con a, a, a year, two years ago. He was doing a, a panel for Tomorrowland, um, and he was hilarious on stage. And um, George Clooney then had then crashed Comic Con. It was so funny. It was really really great. And so yeah, I got to see Hugh Laurie and George Clooney like hamming it up, right which on. Was a huge treat. Huge That's treat. fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So tell me, where can people buy your book? Are you on social media? Uh, where can they follow you, etc.? Sure. Um, on Twitter, I'm just Ryan C. Britt. Um, my name with the letter C. Britt. Um, it's, I'm pretty easy to find on, on Google and things like that. My book is on sale um, anywhere that books sh- or should be sold. So Barnes & Noble, Amazon are fine. Um, you know, if somebody goes to Book Soup in, uh, in Los Angeles, they should be able to get it. Um, and then, yeah, I'm, I'm on Instagram just at uh, Ryan Britt, and uh, I, can, I can be found pretty easily that way. Um, yeah, I think that covers it. Awesome. And you're also going to be in San Diego on January 11th at Mysterious Galaxy. That's right. I'm very excited to go there. It's like a science fiction bookstore. So I, I'm really, I'm really pumped. That'll be great. And I, I love, I have so many friends in, in, in uh, California. <laughs> I can't, I can't wait. Right on, right on. Well, that's awesome. So thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a treat to have you on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We've been uh, talking with Ryan Britt. You got to check out his book, especially if you are a, a Gen Xer. But for any any age group, Luke Skywalker can't read and other geeky truths um, where books sell wherever books are sold. So Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. So it's time for a break. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are on the Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. And we'll be right back. KCAA where every day is a great day. KCAA, Loma Linda. What is San Bernardino going to do with the Carousel Mall? Keep track of the mall development and more local news in the San Bernardino City News. Local sports, education, business, and entertainment news in print and online at sanbernardinocitynews.com. The Colton Cement Plant is closed and the rail yard is expanding. Find out what's happening next in the Colton City News. Get more local news, local features, and a great calendar section full of local events for your family. The Colton City News, in print and online at coltoncitynews.com. Hey, Di, do you know that many people have no idea that the Carousel Mall is actually open? What? Do you tell them that that's where KCAA is located? Of course, but there's more than just KCAA here. Oh, I know. It's a totally great place for a girl's outing. Here at the Carousel Mall, there's Mega Beauty Supply. And it's huge. Yeah, the biggest beauty supply store I've ever seen. And they have wigs and extensions. Then there's Backstreet Beauty Salon and Daniel's Jewelers, a store, by the way, for girls and guys. Yes, and nail fashions where they do waxing and eyelash extensions. There's Lisa's threading. You know, Mark, eyebrow threading is a big thing nowadays. I do know about Mr. Use. <laughs> 
Yes, when you're ready for lunch, it's Mr. Yu's Chinese Restaurant. Mm-mm, best of all, Mr. Yu's is right next to KCAA. Yes, all this located in the Carousel Mall, right off the 215, the 2nd and 3rd Street exit. Come visit the Carousel Mall. We're open. For more info, go to kcaaradio.com. For those of you traveling by air to celebrate <coughs> this holiday season... L.A. Ontario International Airport wants you and your family to have a fun Woo! and safe trip for your convenience. Remember, TSA travel rules are for your safety and those of others. L.A. Ontario International Airport reminds you to arrive early and check with your airlines for flight delays or cancellations. ONT offers 62 daily flights to 15 nonstop western cities. This year, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Santa brings your airport the pause pet assisting with Smiles Stress Relief Program. So, make sure to stop and pause a while, then sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight. <sighs> For more airport information, please visit us at lawa.org. Miss something today, yesterday, last week? Check out our podcasts at www.kcaaradio.com. We leave no listener behind. Welcome back. I'm Erin Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And I'm Todd Brink. And we are on the Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. Boy, an hour goes fast. We only have about seven minutes left of the show. Got to talk about Give Big San Bernardino County. Uh, we had uh, uh, Andrea Mitchell on last week talking yep. about this. And today is Give Big. So uh, December 1st is today. Today is December 1st. And uh, uh, it's a it's a... It's a single day of giving for nonprofits throughout the county of San Bernardino with just about every cause on the planet. Um, if you're in, if you want to give to to pets or veterans or seniors or children or the arts or the environment, anything, you can go to givebigsbcounty.org and uh, find a nonprofit in that that meets your needs that 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 speaks to you and then donate. They, donations can start at ten dollars yeah and Aaron you and I have a long list of, of nonprofits that we support and you know I like the idea of conscious giving you know a lot of times you're you don't really think about it and you, you get hit up by someone maybe stand outside the grocery store and you give them some money and I really don't like that I much prefer the idea of sitting down with you and sort of talking about our finances and saying where do we want our money to go right let's make an impact in one location or two and, and actually, for us, it's a lot more because we have a hard time. We do narrowing, the narrowing field. it down. But but to really make a conscious decision about where our money goes and give big is a great tool for allowing people to do that. You know, we are big supporters of the San Bernardino Symphony, of the Inland Empire Children's Book Project, of the Incredible Edible Community Garden, Time for Change Foundation. Um, there are so many uh, Children's yeah. Fund. Uh, there are so many, and and countywide. I mean, we there are you know there are nonprofits that need help up in Big Bear and out in Morongo and Barstow and uh, Victorville and all the way through the San main San Bernardino County Basin. San Bernardino is a big county, and I love that this is being consolidated in a way that makes it easy for people from all over to see what's going on and connect up with the nonprofits that matter in their area. You know, you know one of the things that I think people misunderstand or don't always be, aren't always aware of is how good it makes you feel when you're able to even just give a little bit to somebody, um, to something that means something to you. Um, you know, it makes your day and, and it's, it's, it's pretty profound psychological effect on the giver as well. Yeah, indeed. Our daughter, um, is really a big fan of the Ronald McDonald house and, you know, that's a place where she, her sorority, that's their phil philanthropy. And, you know, she's always volunteering over there and to have a tool to, to, Go and find those ones that really match up with what you like. You know, maybe that maybe you are a lover of books, and, and as we all are, we love books. Maybe you want to give to the Smiley Library yeah. or the San Bernardino's Library Foundation um, or another library foundation. You can do that. Yeah, it's there's just so many options, and and then if you're not sure, you can click on the link too, and they kind of tell you a little bit about each group. So you have a if you're not quite sure what it is, you can you know I mean some of them are really obvious, but then some of them are not. You know, like the Beagle Rescue. I mean that's pretty clearly you know, uh, 
you know, for dogs, specifically beagles. For beagles, exactly. Right, yeah. Dachshund Paws in, in Norco is a, um, is a uh, nonprofit that works to rescue dachshunds and dachshund mixes. Nice. Got my dogs from there. Oh, nice. So, and I, I'm a fan of, of uh, Doctors Without Borders. That's one of the places that we give. Oh, that's great. That's great. So they even I love how they, they put it on here, and you can see which uh, nonprofits are raising how, how much money and how many donors they have. And they actually have a competition, and the, uh, the nonprofits, if they get the most number of donors or if they raise the most m- much money, they get other prizes and things like that, too. They so do. it's kind of a competition to get these nonprofits to, to reach out to their donor base and connect them up and give them an opportunity to make this event really big. Um, and if I remember correctly, they raised over a half a million dollars last year. They did. This. They did. And and so far this morning, and it's only 657, uh, so far this morning they have raised, uh, well, and uh, leading up to today, $70,419. Uh, that's 1,042 unique donors and the don- uh, 1,350 unique donations. So um, it's get out there and donate. Even if it's 10 bucks, it'll make an impact in our county, and that money stays in our county and helps our county. And the way this works is it's, it's basically like the old style telethon it goes on all day until midnight until midnight tonight and so you can go online all day long and check out find the ones that you like and donate and you know share this on your social medias you know go to the uh, give big sb county um and then pass that along you know pass that link to your friends tell them what you donated to you know offer it up and suggest that they donate too exactly and again, there's something for everyone. So say your friend, your your best friend gave to an arts organization and you're not that big about the, the end of the arts, but man, you love dachshunds or you love uh, the environment. Because I know yeah. um, the Incredible Edible Community Garden is one of the environmental uh, uh, nonprofits that are on there. And so yeah. there's, there's something for everybody. Yeah, I love the Incredible Edible Community Garden. They've got this uh, veterans tree project. They do. They do. You really can sponsor amazing. a tree for a vet. Yeah. And we had them on the air uh, a couple weeks ago talking about That's that. That's right. And um, I just love what they do. I mean, the idea of buying a tree and, and you know, having it recognize a veteran in your family is just a, a wonderful, wonderful program. Can I throw in one thing, too? You know, I mean, it's great you've got these local things and it's going on today and it's great to get involved. But you can get involved and continue to do that over a period of time. Yeah. One of the ways that um, you can do that, too, is if you go to smile.amazon.com, when you buy something from Amazon, you can pick a charity and they will make a donation to that charity as a percentage of your purchase. They will. That's that's very, very true. That's very and, true. And Amazon, so when you're doing your online shopping for the holidays, there's another way to to give back a little bit. Yeah, and Amazon has been really generous to a lot of our local nonprofits. Um, you know, they have several of their distribution centers in the area, and they've been working really hard to make sure that they're giving here. They in are our, in our community. And yeah, you know, they've gotten a bad rap for some of their employee policies, and I know that they've made some efforts to change that. But as a company, they've also been very, very involved in the communities exactly. that they work in. I'm a fan. I'm a mm-hmm. fan. So it is 6:59. Uh, we're at the end of our show. I'm Aaron Brinker. I'm Tobin Brinker. And I'm Todd Brinker. And we are on the Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. Have a great day, everybody. And don't forget to give big. This is 1050 AM KCAA Loma Linda and KCAA FM Yucaipa 106.5 FM business radio. The markets look set to begin December on a positive note. That's after finishing modestly lower on Monday. For November, stocks made some modest gains with the major averages recording their second straight positive month. That's the first time that's happened since May. Auto sales turned up the gas in November. Analysts say the combination of earlier-than-normal year-end deals and low pump prices have pushed U.S. auto sales into record-high territory. They're expecting a sales rate of more than 18 million vehicles, which would make it three straight months with sales above that mark, something that has never happened before. And two top Fed officials are speaking today. Chicago Fed President Charles Evans is discussing the economy and monetary policy in Michigan. And Fed Governor Lael Brainerd talks about lower neutral rates and their impact on monetary policy. Chris Mauer, CNBC. There are no guarantees in love, but there is a guarantee from EH Plus by eHarmony, our new personal matchmaking service. At EH Plus, your own personal matchmaker gets to know you so well, we can guarantee introductions that will be satisfying and exciting. EH Plus goes far beyond regular online dating sites, and that's a guarantee. 
Visit us at ehplus.com slash love or call 1-855-930-LOVE. I love running errands. Grocery store, giddy up. Take the kitty to the vet, absolutely. Because my catnip is called the Sirius XM Free Listening Event. Two weeks of commercial free music plus sports, news, comedy, talk, and entertainment for free. Tune in now and get that feeling that starts with H and ends with happy. The Sirius XM Free Listening Event now through December 2nd. Hit the sat button on your inactive satellite radio to listen now. Learn more at SiriusXM.com slash listen free. Sirius XM, road happy. Not available on select radios. Your application looks great, but I'm not seeing any marketing experience. The ad said mechanic needed. Right, but I need a mechanic slash marketing wizard. What do you know about reputation management? Nothing. Search engine optimization? Uh, is that under the hood? Hmm. Let Dex Media be your marketing department. We can help with any digital marketing solution from search to social. Contact Dex Media, that's D-E-X Media, to get found, get chosen, and get talked about. Call 844-230-3436 or visit DexMedia.com today. It's time for your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. In Riverside, we have stop and go traffic on the 91 westbound between McKinley Street and Green River Road. East is slow and go from Van Buren to 14th Street. The 71 south is busy between Pine Avenue and the 91. In Fontana, an accident. The shoulder is blocked on the 10 eastbound after Cherry Avenue. This is a car fire. Watch for emergency crews to close the right lane. In Riverside, stop and go traffic on the 15 northbound between Temesco County Canyon Road and Highway 91. In Temecula, stop and go traffic on the 15 southbound between 79 Winchester Road and Rainbow Valley Boulevard. In Paris, stop and go traffic on the 215 northbound between Nuevo Road and Harley Knox Boulevard. In Riverside, an accident, the left lane is blocked on the 215 southbound approaching Columbia Avenue. Stop and go traffic from Barton Road. This is an injury crash. In Chino, stop and go traffic on the 60 westbound between Mountain Avenue and the 57 Orange Freeway. The 10 west is slow and go from Central to the 57. The 210 west is heavy in pockets from Carnelian to Foothill Boulevard. This has been your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 Traffic Report. I'm Erin Brinker. This report has been brought to you by Unbound. At Unbound, they don't see poverty. They see potential. That's just one way Unbound is different. Learn more at unbound.org. With your Tuesday news, I'm Jim Miller, CNBC News, KCAA, 10.50 a.m. and 106.5 FM, the station that leaves no listener behind. And police continue their campaign against postal mail thieves. One group canvassing the Hunters Ridge area sidelined after residents spotted them helping themselves to the contents of community mailboxes late Friday night. Officers located evidence of numerous mail thefts and turned it over to the U.S. Postal Inspector's Office. It was the fourth series of mail thefts arrest by Montana police in recent weeks. And federal authorities seeking to freeze the assets of a San Bernardino doctor, an office manager accused of illegally diverting half of $20 million they raised from Chinese investors, hoping to qualify for an immigration program. 45-year-old Dr. Robert Yang of Redlands and the administrative manager of his medical practice, 45-year-old Claudia Kano of Pomona, secured funds from 40 investors hoping to immigrate to the U.S. The Aldi supermarket chain will hold hiring events today for new stores in San Bernardino and Riverside counties. Companies looking to fill nearly 150 store associate positions with wages that range from $13 to $21 an hour, depending on experience. One hiring event, 7 to 8 at 5 p at the Riverside Marriott Convention Center at 3637 5th Street. That is to fill positions in Fontana, Redlands, Highland, Beaumont, Lake Elsinore, La Quinta, Moreno Valley, Palm Desert, Palm Springs, and Yucca Puff. Well, George Finkel, a retired San Bernardino police sergeant, who for years spread joy throughout the city at Christmas at the official department Santa Claus, has died. He was 76 years old, described by his former colleagues as a selfless man with a jovial personality who could play a mean harmonica. Finkel's large frame and white beard made him the ideal Santa at the city's annual Ho-Ho Parade and the YMCA Children's Christmas Parade. And that's your news. I'm Jim Miller, CNBC News, KCAA, 1050 AM and 106.5 FM, the station that leaves no listener behind. KCAA is your CNBC News affiliate. We're the station that gets down to business. 
He has been a professional money manager for the last 18 years. He is a regular contributor to the Fox Business Channel and Bloomberg Radio. In addition to this, he is a regular contributor to TheStreet.com and MarketWatch.com. Now he's live here on the Wall Street Business Network. Here is Bill Gunderson. And welcome to the Tuesday morning, December 1st. Uh -huh. Turn the page on your calendar. Welcome to December and welcome to a good start in the market here so far. We have the Dow up 133 points this a.m. The Dow currently sits at 17,857. And there are those that are calling for 18,000 by the end of the year, we'll see. The S&P 500 also up today. It is up 14 points right now. That works out to 7 tenths of 1%. The S&P is at 2,094. The NASDAQ is up 6 tenths of 1%. That translates to 31 points. For the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is at 5,140. Crude oil, well, gosh, back down again. That doesn't help the market. $41.60 on light, sweet crude. It was, uh, what, about 43 42 yesterday. Now $41.60. Gold is down just a skosh here, $1,064 per ounce on gold. The euro actually up a little bit today. That's the first time in quite some time that we've seen a gain in the euro, 1.0632. And as we look out at the 10-year bond right now, we see a yield of 2.21%. And, uh, you know, up a little bit from where we began the year. And uh, the question remains, will the Fed hike here? Uh, in a couple of weeks, or will they hold off until next year? It looks like the market, at least today, thinks that they'll hold off till next year. So welcome to the Best Stocks Now Radio Hour with professional money manager Bill Gunnerson. We begin a new month. It's now December. Turn the page on your calendar. November, for the most part, was a pretty flat month in the market. And, of course, it's been a pretty flat year in the market. Well, now it's December, four weeks left, and uh, we turn the page on the year. The fourth quarter is fast, uh, rushing to a close, and companies will be reporting in early January just where their earnings came in versus expectations. And, of course, this quarter that ended uh, two months ago came in much better than expected. We'll also get that glimpse into 2016. We'll continue to sharpen our pencil there, and we'll continue to peek around the corner at 2017. You know, I love this time of year. I'm starting to see twinkling lights show up in my home and posts and pillars wrapped in uh, wreaths with uh, twinkling lights and uh, Christmas trees, the smell of fresh Christmas trees uh, in the home, and holiday music, Christmas music, good time of year. A little chilly on the chilly side, though. Eurozone PMI, talk about chili. The Purchasing Managers Index comes in weak once again, but a modest recovery from the last report. The big chill continues to uh, set in in the Eurozone in their economy. That uh, market basically flat here in 2016 or 2015. I'm getting my years mixed up. They're all kind of running together the older I get here. Uh, but, uh, you know, what will Europe, what will Europe bring in 2016? You know what? I'm not real hep. I'm going to do my uh, studies here on European uh, earnings the last couple of years and what they're going to make this year and the expectations for next year because that's what it's all about. It's about earnings growth, and uh, there hasn't been much earnings growth in Europe for quite some time. China continues to contract. It's going to be very hard for them to reach that 7% GDP growth target price doesn't look like that's uh, attainable. Uh, the China market's down this year, double digits, after a torrid run earlier in the year when those A shares uh, began to uh, heat up. But, of course, 
that was a short-lived rally that uh, was fueled a lot by speculation from Chinese investors. And uh, the Chinese markets proceeded to uh, really take it uh, in the shorts after that. And uh, China continues to correct uh, now, and it continues to slow down. What will become of the Chinese economy and the Chinese market in 2016? Well, for now, I'm sticking with U.S. stocks. Canadian GDP. Boy, Canada's had a rough year. Their market down about 17%. Well, it's an economy that uh, is very much dependent on commodities. Oil, in particular. Oil sands. And it has not been a good year for oil. But yet the Canadian GDP did expand in this most recent quarter by 2.3%. Distressed debt continues to increase. In fact, Moody's reports that the distressed debt ratio increased to 20.1% in November up from 19% in October. It last went over 20% back in September of 2009. That was not a very good year. When it hit 23.5%, distressed debt currently stands at 20.1%. A lot of that is oil and gas companies. They borrowed money to go drill, to frack, to uh, drill baby drill, and Now, with oil at $42 per barrel, it's hard for them to uh, even break even, and they're having a hard time now paying back the money that they borrowed to do the drilling projects. Now, here's the story of the day. Okay, you've heard me talk many times about asset allocation. The efficient frontier, a mix of stocks, bonds, and other assets. It's the All the rage in my industry, it's not all the rage here at Gunderson Capital Management. The uh, efficient frontier dictates that, you know, based on your age and your risk tolerance, that you should always have a big chunk in the bond market and a big chunk in the stock market and a few other assets like precious metals, maybe international, maybe real estate. No matter what the conditions in the world are, you continue to maintain that asset allocation. Well, Morgan Stanley is out today warning investors that they should prepare for below average returns going forward. In fact, they're predicting that the efficient frontier over the next several years will produce about 2 to 3.5% annual returns. 2 to 3.5%. Now, that's why I don't buy into the theory of the efficient frontier. Moreover, the move lately has been to robots managing your efficient frontier portfolio. And for what? Morgan Stanley predicting that the efficient frontier in years to come will produce 2.2% to 3.5% annual returns. In fact, they are predicting that the efficient frontier is about to collapse. Well, you know what? (laughs) The vast majority of folks listening to me and the vast majority of folks that have uh, their portfolios managed by these big mega big box firms are in efficient frontier portfolios. How do you know if you're an efficient frontier portfolio? Well, if you're about 55, 60 years old, look at your portfolio, and if you have about 55% in the bond market or bond funds, that's what they use as bond funds, and if you have the other 40% in stock funds, a mix of large caps, mid caps, maybe some small caps sprinkled in for a little excitement, and some foreign and emerging markets, you're in an efficient frontier or asset allocation portfolio spit out by a computer, and maybe picked by robots. If that's what you want, hey, you know, if that's what this business has come to, (laughs) it makes me sick. You mean there's nobody out there anymore that can look at the world we're in and say, you know what, I don't want bonds in my portfolio right now. I don't like the prospects for interest rates going forward. And eventually, when the stock market begins to get a little wobbly and the economy starts to shrink and we go through another recession and we go through another bear market, I don't want a monkey, I mean a robot, 
picking the efficient frontier for me. I want to use a little bit common sense and a human brain and a little bit of experience over the last several decades have seen bear markets and cycles come and go. Morgan Stanley warns, prepare for below average returns from the efficient frontier, which is a practice that they use quite widely. They're preparing you for two to three and a half percent returns annually going forward. All right, well, this is Bill Gunderson, where we don't buy into the efficient frontier theory. Right now, we like stocks. We're 85% U.S. stocks, 15% cash. When we come back, we'll talk about some of my favorite U.S. stocks right now. It's the best stocks now, Radio Hour. Is your IRA being managed by a robot? Does a nameless, faceless computer program make automatic decisions about what to do with your hard-earned money? Perhaps your employer conveniently invested your retirement with a supercomputer, mega, big-box warehouse brokerage firm, and now you're simply thought of as just another number in a vast sea of millions. This is Rob Sanford for Gunderson Capital Management, and I'm here to testify that Bill Gunderson is no robot. I've seen him. Bill is in the office every single day from bell to bell, personally and actively managing the accounts of every single client. He never leaves the helm or turns over the wheelhouse to some junior trainee or office deckhand. He's the skipper. His decisions are thorough, well thought out, researched and conducted with great care. So give Gunderson Capital Management a call at 855-611-BEST. If you're driving right now and can't write it down, just search Bill Gunderson on the web when you get home. So say goodbye to the robot and shake hands with Bill Gunderson today. What are the leading asset classes in the market right now? Stocks, bonds, cash, gold? BestStocksNowApp.com. What are the leading indexes in the world currently? U.S., Europe, Japan, South America, emerging markets? BestStocksNowApp.com. What are the best sectors in the market now? Energy, technology, retail, financials, healthcare? BestStocksNowApp.com. What are the best stocks in the market now from evaluation, relative performance, and technical perspective? Exxon, Celgene, Apple, Delta, to name a few, BestStocksNowApp.com. The Best Stocks Now App database currently has over 4,000 stocks, indexes, exchange-traded funds, and mutual funds to choose from. What are the best ones now? BestStocksNowApp.com. The Best Stocks Now App was invented by Bill Gunderson and Douglas Sapperly. Bill Gunderson is the president of Gunderson Capital Management. In addition to the PC version, the Best Stocks Now App is also available on Apple and Android platforms. BestStocksNowApp.com. As world events test the nerves of the everyday investor, are you confident that your money manager will know what to do? Will he or she calmly pick up the phone and explain the way to prosper in times of turmoil? Or will they even pick up the phone at all? This is Rob Sanford for Gunderson Capital Management. It's nice to know that Bill is at the helm, steering around financial storms and maybe even profiting during a downturn. If you're constantly hearing the words, stay the course or asset allocation from your financial advisor, perhaps it's time to get in touch with Bill. The folks at Gunderson Capital Management will actually pick up the phone and speak with you personally. Bill will look at your current positions and rechart a course that just may keep you from going over the falls alongside your rookie tour guide. This is not the time to hitch your wagon to some junior planner who doesn't even know your name. There is almost always an answer. Search Bill Gunderson on the web or give him a call at 855-611-BEST. There are a lot of investors out there in today's world that enjoy managing their own money. There's nothing wrong with this, but maybe you should manage a small portion of your overall portfolio and let a professional money manager manage your serious money. Just like you don't learn how to be an accomplished golfer by spending a few hours on the golf course or at the driving range on the weekends, it takes years of experience to even begin to understand how the financial markets work. And even then, it still takes hours and hours every day to stay on top of an ever-changing marketplace. There are numerous pitfalls that can stand in the way of the part-time investor. If a constant barrage of contradictory opinions keeps you from being able to make sound decisions, if you have a hard time keeping your emotions in check, or if you're continually selling at the bottom and buying at the top, then maybe it's time to consider a full-time professional money manager. Give the folks at Gunderson Capital Management a call and let Bill Gunderson manage your money. You can reach them at 855-611-BEST. That's 855-611-BEST or pwstreet.com.
And welcome back here to the second quarter of the Best Stocks Now Radio Hour. I was just looking at my uh, stock twits feed. I had a few questions asked of me. I currently have 21,000... 515 followers on stock Twitch. You can become 21,516 by uh, creating a little account at stock Twits, where investors and stock traders hang out during the day. Uh, I've met uh, Howard Lindzen, who uh, is uh, one of the founders of stock Twits. I've actually been out fishing with Howard Lindzen. We went out lobster fishing in the harbor one night. We came away with a couple of lobsters. And uh, we try to find lobsters all day long looking at stock charts. And I had somebody on Stock Twits ask me, what do you think of GE? Well, you know what? Here is what GE has done over the last 10 years. 1.9% per year. The market's done 5.2% per year. That's not the trade of a best stock now. It's been a lost decade for GE. Let's not forget that in 2008, GE was down, uh, I think, 50, 54% when the market was down 38%. So I don't.